Hey there, maniacs. Um, Gonzo here. I'm going to do a, a real quick reference video right now because there seems to be a common um, rash of problems going on with uh, in the 944 cars um, that has to do with the failure of reference sensors. The removal of reference sensors can be a little bit tricky. Sometimes you get lucky. Uh, the reinstallation of reference sensors and the block that it's mounting on. Um, so I have some, some parts here that are old reference sensors and a, a broken block, but I think it'll, it'll uh, be helpful for you guys who have to make this change. So let me move this camera. Let's see if I can set this up to show you what we're working with. All right, so. This is a reference sensor mounting block, what it looks like off of the car, okay? Um, now this is going to apply to the all, all the 8-valve NA cars, okay, because the turbos and I think in the S cars have a hall sensor and a reference sensor, but in, in our case, the NA cars, they have two reference sensors. Now these are reference sensors. They are stripped of their wire, which would typically go from here and back around into the clip up behind the firewall and um, and then back into the DME. Okay, there's two of them, just like in our cars. They're identical to each other. Um, the, Bo the Bosch part number is, let's see, 261-210-002. So, and then the block itself, it has two holes, um, one labeled B like Bravo, which is the one that's closest to the, to the motor, and one labeled labeled D like Delta, which is farthest back towards the rear of the car. Okay, and then it's got two holes on which it mounts to the car. Now, this sensor is broken. You can see here where the, the pivot hole broke, and I'm going to explain why that is. The way this mounts to the car, all right, let's assume that my yellow Bosch box is the motor. Okay, so if we could if we could stand behind the motor and see how the reference sensor mounting block is on, we go like this. Okay, and down at this bottom hole, which is broken. Oops, let me try and hold it from this side. This bottom hole, which is broken, is a brass tube that is, I don't know, welded or pressed into the back of the uh, intake or the, the head or whatever, the top of the bell housing, I guess it is. Okay? And it's a pivot bolt, so it's a sleeve. The screw that retains this side of the block goes into that sleeve and then it's threaded and this block can pivot and we've all heard about the 0.8 millimeter um, spacing that you need okay that is the point of this hole which is oblong so after the brackets installed on the pivot point it can pivot up and down through the oblong hole. So the sensors sit in like this. You can see they're tight even just not even on the car. And they go all the way flush. Okay, with the hole the threaded hole for the, their mounting 
screws lining up with one of each of the caps. The way to remove the sensor, I have found the best way, is to remove the bolt and then to, with a, with a, a locking pliers, a vice grip or, or a channel lock, grab the top, twist and pull. Twist and pull. That's really it. There is no, there is no easy method. If you find that your sensors do not come out and you need to remove the block, which happens quite often, what you're going to want to do is remove both screws first, okay, and then using a, a flathead screwdriver, you're going to create a small wedge between the block. the mounting block and the block of the car and just tap gently because you need to get the back pin unseated otherwise you end up with that result like I have where the bottom pin is broken. Now this could still be used it could be seated up on top of the sleeve and canted you know mounted with this other side but because the calibration on these is so difficult to do um, you know it's, it's obviously not desirable if you do have to take it off I recommend taking a drummer a Dremel with a, um, a small drum sander and go in and out and just polish these sleeves up just to just to take a fraction of a, you know a millimeter off of the inside so that the, the sensors, the new sensors can go in and out easily. Now what the reason I retain these old sensors, okay, is typically when they're new, there's a um, O-ring that seats in this groove and I use a small a pick or a hook and I pull the O-ring out and sand this down now, if I need to calibrate new sensors, if I do need to take the block off, I can glue a, a 0.8 millimeter washer to the bottom of this guy, seat them both inside of the block, mount the block, get the spacing right, and then remove it and just drop my new sensors in and cross my fingers. Um, so, for those of you who have had difficulty removing the sensors don't feel bad it's not you it's the sensors um, again you know the best way is going to be to remove them while they're attached to the car undo the retaining bolt with a pliers or a vice grip grab the top like this twist and pull okay if you can get a long pry bar in and get the right angle where you can get underneath it, it might give it a hand sometimes two people is the magic trick to have somebody twisting and somebody prying at the same time but just stay with it there's not really a lot of space in there. I saw some people recommend using like PV blaster or some type of lubricant. Doesn't really help. I think what happens is the oil, the exposure to the motor and the grease and the heat swells the O-ring and literally bonds it to the inner sleeve of the mounting block. So um, it really is just a perseverance thing. If you do have to take the block off, it's not the end of the world. Calibrating them is relatively easy. But um, if you can avoid it, by all means, you can s start with uh, the last known good setting. All right, hope this helps as always. And, um, you know, keep your cars on the road. And we'll catch you on the flip side of the digital autobahn. See ya.